Yes. Uh, namaste, everybody, and welcome to the Ask and Grow webinar. I'm Suresh, and I head the brand communication for And Academy. And I'm very happy that you've decided to spend the next hour with us. At And Academy, our motto is to make design education accessible, affordable, and industry relevant. And to this end, we present a webinar with Soumya Tiwari and Sakshi Jain, who are industry leaders in graphic design. Uh, just to give you a quick introduction, uh, with an MA in art direction from Manchester Metropolitan University, Soumya has worked with some of the biggest production houses like Yashraj Films and Reliance. She's keenly interested in creating bold brand identities and crafting meaningful and inclusive communication for brands. Sakshi is a visual communication designer and educator with more than a decade of experience in the field of design and education. Sakshi has designed multiple award-winning picture books and delivered projects for eminent organizations such as UNICEF, uh, Hindustan Petroleum, CBSE, and the list is endless, to be honest. Uh, with that, I would like to invite Sakshi to take the stage and take us to this wonderful presentation. Thank you, Suesh, and welcome, everyone. Okay, now, before we begin, um, just by the show of hands, can I uh, check and see if all our attendees can see what's uh, on the screen? Can you see a dancing potato on the screen? Can I have a show of hands, please? Okay, lovely. Aman can see it. Awesome. Okay, I believe most of you can see it. Okay, hands down. It's a quick, quick check-in, okay? Um, now, um, Archana, you can put your hand down and Divyansh, thank you so much for your response. Okay, now um, my first question to you is, how many of you love this dancing potato? How many of you love potato actually for that matter? Okay, Aman loves potato, lovely. So there's one person, okay, Chaitanya loves potato. Is there anyone else in the group who loves potato? Okay. My hand as well. Okay, lovely, Soumya. So three out of 12 people uh, love potato. Excellent. And Soumya, can you click, please? Okay, you can love it. Now, how many of you hate potato? Like, you know, really hate it. Okay, Rose, Mary, Mummy, Mujhe Alu ki Sabzi Bana ke Khilati hai. Kabhi Alu Bhindi, Kabhi Alu Piyaz, Kabhi Alu Bharta. How many of you hate potato? Is there anyone in this group who hates potato? Hello? So no haters, okay? So you don't love it, you don't hate it. Do you think that you can ignore this potato? No, you can't, right? Like if, so that thinks you can ignore this potato, really? <laughs> this cute little dancing potato or potato for that matter in our diet. So the point that we're trying to make over here is um, we think that graphic design is like a potato. It's like the Indian staple to a large extent. You can love it, you can hate it, but you can't ignore it. And um, it is with this intent that we are going to start today's discussion on graphic design. So may I, may I request you to move? Okay, lovely. Thank you. Now, before we go any further, outside of the formal introduction that Suyash gave us, we'd like to tell you a little something about why we became who we are today. Why did I choose to become a communication designer? Right from when I was very young, I was fascinated by stories. I used to love listening to stories. My grandmother used to tell me all these stories, be it religious or her childhood tales or random tales just to shut me up. And then of course, you know, there were these books that I would read starting from picture books to novels to graphic novels. And that got me interested in the idea of how images and words come together to weave these beautiful worlds outside of the one that we inhabit on day to, in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and it is with this intent um, that I got into the, uh, it is with this uh, ex, uh, like interest that I got into design. I went to National Institute of Design. I graduated with specialization in animation film design. For a little while, I worked with Nickelodeon, um, realized that I want to do something that has a, like a, a sense of permanence attached to it and hence got into publishing worked on a lot of publishing books with multiple illustrators, national and international, worked on book projects with multiple brands, did campaigns that had social impact, for example, leprosy, 
or cultural literacy or language or um, um, the like education for the underserved communities, be it teachers or children. And from there, um, I went into academics for design uh, because somewhere I realized that what I'm trying to do is deeply related uh, to the act to the intellectual or the creative rigor that academic has so I tried to marry the two and hence I ended up in design education and that's where I am today like I, I'm very proud to be a communication designer and an educator I continue to practice and I continue to teach and I take great amount of pride in who I am and what I chose to be so would you like to tell us a little bit about why you chose to be a communication designer that's actually as you rightly said that uh, you know it almost always starts with like a little interest that you uh, like little signs of interest that you start showing towards things uh, like yours was in stories and I it was for me it was about realizing that uh, you know overall I was a very curious person and I was very inquisitive or observant I would you know um, very typical I think a lot of people like to do that but I would like you know uh, like to sit in public spaces and just watch people and you know like think about where they're from, what they're thinking, what are we even doing here, stuff like that. And then I would, you know, go around collecting th things like rocks with different textures or like dried leaves. And I would sort of study them and people would think I'm like <laughs> this weird person who's collecting <laughs> trash. Uh, but then I made a profession out of it eventually. And um, so um, just that curiosity, I think it led me to um, you know, get into design and uh, uh, I think that is when the interest of uh, digital, uh, working in digital space came into being where, you know, a digital space for me growing up was always about, you know, a space where you, uh, I could, you know, connect to people, where I could reach out to people that was distant but still in touch with me. And then that space is now slowly translated and, you know, uh, there were brands in these spaces and they became a large part of the community. So I think that is when uh, I started realizing that brands are also like people. They have to become communities and they can't just, you know, act like brands and, you know, give out discounts every now and then. Um, so that is, that was uh, what I loved doing. And uh, then my role at Yashtaj Films, that made me look at things in a very different way from that where I worked with people and made brands out of them. You know, I worked with actors uh, and uh, uh, I had to sort of realize their quirks and their personalities, interests, talents, and sort of make a brand or an image out of that, which was very interesting. Uh, and now with education as well, I think entering it, I've realized that, uh, you know, uh, uh, just, uh, like using that same knowledge but applying it to something completely different I think that is also very exciting for me like right now when we're talking about all of this we're uh, sort of creating an experience designing an experience for learners um, so I, I think that is what excites me about design I don't think you can like actually draw boundaries around it and you can put it in a box and say you know this is what you do as a designer because you can explore so many different things um, I think that's enough about us and our stories. I think let's ask the people who are here, who are here to listen and interact with us. Um, what do you think about graphic design? Like there's no right or wrong answer, but what do you think it is? It's different things for each one of us, I believe. So we would love to know if you could type it in the chat for us. Uh, could you tell us what graphic design is for you? Or what do you think you would do as a graphic designer? Okay, you have all of 30 minutes to respond and we would like to see 16 responses in the chat box before we move further. What is graphic design to you? What does it mean, really? Why are you here? And what do you know about graphic design? Maybe we'll ask our panelists also to respond. Like, And again, there are, there are no right or wrong answers to this. Like even with design, there is no correct answer. It's just your point of view. Okay, can anybody tell us what graphic design means to them? 
it can be a word, it can be a sentence, it can be a feeling. Okay, lovely. So Prachi Mitchell Mittal says graphic design is communicating a message through visuals. Okay, Kashish Mehta also believes trying to communicate messages through visuals. Lovely. What else? Is it just about message? Is communication uh, just about message? A way to communicate with the widest audience as possible. Lovely. Graphic design is the art of creating visual elements. Awesome. So you have to be able to see it for it to be graphic design. Are you sure about that? Okay, what else? These are good answers, people, really. Creative ways to make people aware about something. Excellent. So message, like the recurring, uh, like words that we're looking at are message, creative ways, awareness, centered around people. What else? What else is graphic design? So based, okay, now that our 30 seconds are up, I believe that based on combining visuals and text, okay, combining visuals and text is graphic design. Excellent. So every text and visual that is combined becomes graphic design. Yes, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. <laughs> Okay, lovely. Thank you so much for the, to those who have responded, to those who are still thinking about it. Please feel free to put in your answers. We are eagerly waiting to hear from you. These, like, so some of the things that you've said uh, are accurate, uh, but graphic design is perhaps a little more than just sending out a message, a little more than just about creating images or combining image and text together. But before we dive deep into what graphic design is, today we're going to talk a little more about what is not graphic design. Now, the reason why we're going to talk about what is not graphic design is because, and I think Soumya, my colleague over here would agree with me, we've all been subjected to these ridiculous assumptions over and over again, when we've told people that, you know, we're graphic designers, we do graphic design. And we're going to burst some of these myths today. It's important for us to understand the, uh, that the domain of graphic design, the discipline of graphic design is not limited to uh, a very, um, uh, a very uh, let's say, redundant understanding of graphic design. It is it has become larger, it has become broader, it has become much more deeper as a discipline, as the times have evolved, as the technology has evolved, as we as consumers of images and experiences have evolved. So without much ado, we have five myths that we're going to burst for you today. First one of which is that people believe that you have to be able to draw to be a graphic designer. Now, um, of course it helps if you can draw, like any skill that you have, you know, any skill that you have is a useful skill, right? And so is the skill of drawing. But do you have to be like a great artist to be able to, to be a graphic designer? No, graphic design is not limited to your drawing abilities. Um, graphic design is a discipline that allows you to explore various ways and means of generating images. The purpose of generating these images and populating, uh, uh, it, the purpose of generating these images may vary. And so does the way by which you generate these images. What is important is that you need to have a creative inclination. You may not be able to represent objects as you see them. You may not be able to draw them as accurately as you see them in the world around you. You may not be able to capture them exactly as they are with the right perspective or with the right colors and shades. You may not be able to do that with your drawing skills, but you have other means to do it. There's the skill of photography. Do you have an eye for photography? Are you able to look at things differently? Are you able to see 
what others can't see? Are you able to perceive and make sense and connect dots? Are you able to draw from your day-to-day -day experiences and give it a creative bend? Are you able to harness your creativity? Are you able to use certain tools of graphic design in a manner that you're able to generate something novel or innovative? Are you someone who's able to use a different kind of mediums, be it material, be it textures, be it um, digital facilities that are available to us, be it something as, you know, uh, as uh, simple as our day-to-day -day device as a phone to generate new content. If you have the capacity to do that, you perhaps have the aptitude to be a graphic designer. Soumya, would you like to elaborate further on this? Yeah, I think you have put it uh, very correctly, Sakshi. Uh, drawing, eventually, it becomes a tool of thinking, uh, not just you know representing visuals, but thinking. So most designers, if you look at their process, if you look at how they arrive at a design, you will see a lot of scribbles. You will see a lot of different ways of looking at one thing. Um, so for example, if you look at uh, you know this uh, logo that I have here, uh, this G that I have here, um, it's a very nicely drawn G, but it has uh, a deeper meaning to it. The moment you look at the colors, the moment you look at the form of uh, this particular G, you know that it's Google. So you know, it's about, uh, passing on that message to your audience, creating that uh, uh, trust or that value in a brand uh, and not just about making a G look like a G. Uh, for example, a Fido Dido, it's very different from the 7 of Master Time. I'm not sure how many people here might have seen it, but um, you know, it's not like a very nicely anatomically correct figure. Uh, but as soon as you see this guy, you know it's seven up. So that is the uh, that is what design is meant to do. It's not just uh, you know making drawing things the way they are. Uh, you can use images to do it. This is a this on top here. Uh, the chicky visual that you see is a typeface designed uh, by taking inspiration from a chicky. Now it doesn't you you can't really like draw broken peanuts, but uh, this designer called Kimya Gandhi, she's used, uh, taken inspiration from how in a chikki when peanuts come together, they have these broken edges. They're not perfect anymore. And that makes the design, that makes it stand out, right? Lovely. So I, I, draw like, with, uh, I just like to add one more thing. I think you made a very good point with Fido Dido because designers at the end of the day are also not working in isolation. So you may not be able to draw or you may not be a great photographer, let's say, but you can always collaborate with creative contributors out there. There are people who are good illustrators, great character uh, designers. And, you know, like the idea of a designer is to be able to look at various parts of the whole and bring it together, stitch it together beautifully, right? So it's a collaborative process and the ability to bring in talent and expertise of various other people to be able to meet your objective is a skill, not necessarily the skill to draw that will be your advantage in the long run. Please yeah. go ahead, yeah. Okay, so coming to our second uh, myth or misconception that we keep hearing a lot, I think, in the industry as well. People think uh, graphic design is all about Photoshop and Photoshop in particular because it is such a widely used term that people generally like mix graphic design and Photoshop and they think if I learn graph uh, Photoshop, I'm now a graphic designer. But um, Again, like drawing even, Photoshop is just an execution tool. It can just, uh, you know, translate your ideas uh, to a final visual outcome. But to arrive to that final visual outcome, what goes behind it, the thinking, the process that goes behind it is what makes design design. Otherwise, it could have just been, you know, about making things look pretty and uh, making them like uh, just drawing really well or uh, operating Photoshop really well. Lovely. Um, taking this conversation forward, uh, like now, like 
talking about Photoshop as a tool and talking about assuming that if you are able to like, you know, generate images on Photoshop, you're probably a designer, is perhaps one of the gravest mistakes that people make. There are a lot of people who have learned the tools and are calling themselves graphic designers out there. And that is perhaps the reason why, you know, like people like Soumya and I like feel that our sentiments get hurt. You know, <laughs> we are asked, oh, so you must be good at Photoshop and that's why you're a designer. But um, tool is at the end of the day, a way, a means by which you achieve the end results. It's not, um, it's not the be all end all. And the reason, and uh, there's a reason why we've put the Nike logo over here. Many a times one would have wondered, you know, like uh, the Nike logo, when you look at it is a simple tick at the end of the day. Like, you know, it doesn't take a lot uh, to be able to generate an image like that. But why, why has this, uh, why has the brand retained it for so long? Why has it become one of the most identifiable logos of all times? In fact, it's one of the few logos that is identified without the name of the brand itself, no matter which part of the world you go in. And that is the power of graphic design. The, the image itself becomes so powerful that it transcends the boundaries of culture. It transcends the boundaries of language. It transcends the boundaries of your social, cultural, political, upbringing and it has a universal following attached to it now that is what true design is all about that is what a great brand identity is all about because it is able to stand the test of time it is able to stand the te te test of technological changes and innovations that happen and yet it continues to appeal to the people. Now that is not going to happen if you just know how to use Photoshop. To be able to do that, you have to have a deeper understanding of the brand that you're designing for, the values that the brand um, carries, the fact that Nike itself is derived from a from like you know like uh, the word Nike itself is derived from the uh, from the Greek language. And Nike in Greek means the goddess of victory. Now, you may not know that. The epistemological meaning of the word itself may not have any relevance to you. But over the period of time, it is this philosophy which has driven the brand to uh, create an identity for itself, to drive its campaigns accordingly. And that is the reason why the tick, simple though it may be, um, extremely uh, um, recognizable though it may be, common though it may be, continues to be one of the most powerful symbols in the commercial world that we are a part of. Another example of, you know, like why uh, we assume, um, why uh, like another uh, misconception uh, that we would like to uh, address at this point of time is that the work of a graphic designer is not necessarily just to generate images. Graphic designers, are responsible for navigating behaviors. They, they are able to influence the behaviors of people. They're able to make people behave in one way or the other. And that is the reason why we have the fire exit, exit sign over here. Now think about it. You're in a building. Okay, the building catches fire. Now, if you don't have the right kind of signage to navigate you, if you're not able to read the sign, if you're not able to um, figure out whether the sign is for fire exit or not, it could lead to a serious catastrophe. The sensibilities, it may not always be aesthetically beautiful. Sometimes it's also about pragmatic considerations. That is the responsibility of a graphic designer. Graphic designers are also um, able to influence behaviors, not only in the physical spaces, but also in virtual spaces. To be able to understand the needs of people. For example, the Star Delhi campaign, where multiple artists came together, actually started as an online campaign. The call for the artists to come together in a physical space was made on social media. Social, the social media campaign of Start India allowed the artists from different parts of the city to connect, to collaborate, to come together. The, the campaign itself um, inspired many of these artists who were otherwise working in silos or independently to connect, to come together and to transform the city that we're living in. So it moved from a virtual 
to a very real physical experience. And that is what graphic design is all about. It is about the cognitive processes that drive the designers to create experiences that influence people, that inspire people, that inform people, that educate people. And that form the, the like that, that influence and add to the culture that we're all a part of, right? Okay, moving on to the next one, please. Hmm. So now that we've spoken about how for like, you know, graphic design is not equal to Photoshop, that does not necessarily mean that graphic design has nothing to do with technology. In fact, you know, like there's a lot of like there's a lot of popular opinion about, OK, you know, if you're not comfortable with technology, like if you don't like technology or if you like um, if you're not tech savvy, then, you know, graphic design is right because it has to, everything to do with, you know, print and print and packaging, but little to do with technological or digital landscape. Let us let us clear that right here and right now. Graphic design is not divorced from technology. It is very much a part of the digital landscape that you and I exist in. It is contributing to it, it is populating it, it is influencing it, and it is drawing from it. In fact, as the technology has evolved, so has the discipline of graphic design to include and to become more and more immersive, to create higher experiences for uh, the consumers across the world. So may, may I request you to please move on to the next slide. And if you could please elaborate further on this. So uh, talking about technology, I think one technology that even like from our grandmas and grandpas to our nieces and cousins and children even uh, connect to is I think WhatsApp. I think everybody is now on WhatsApp, like forwarding messages and using these emojis. Now these emojis, have you ever wondered like this is, these are symbols that are being used by the entire world and these are the very same symbols that people um, like beyond the barriers of languages or beyond the barriers of uh, being able to understand each other through spoken word or through written word will still understand if I put a tongue out emoji after my message or if I put a red heart after my message like then it sets the context right at least. So um, although it is it is uh, designed, I think, uh, by hand and then on Photoshop, and now it is being uh, carried around and being used by the entire world through technology. Um, then I think uh, in the past couple of years, we've all been on this app called Arogya Setu and it had a wonderful feature uh, that addressed the need of the hour, which was, uh, you know, where when somebody that you had met or somebody in your close vicinity was infected, you would get notified. Uh, so just that brilliant idea is also translated visually uh, by a graphic designer. You know? um, and uh, then uh, in today's world with the rise of technology and people adapting to it more and more, there's a lot of uh, engineers who become designers or designers who learn to code. And that has given, I think, rise to creative coding. So this four that you see that is moving, that is interacting is not really made by a person, but is made by a code. So, you know, it, it's gone beyond the tools of design. Uh, it's gone beyond drawing by hand. It's gone beyond Photoshop. It has now incorporated something like coding to, you know, make make visuals out of it. Lovely. Thanks. I, mean, I, I Can I just add one little part to it? I would, although you've covered it, I do want to bring in, I do want to introduce the term data-driven design over here. There is a general assumption that, you know, all the things data have to do with interaction design. But let us be very clear that data visualization and data-driven design is as much a part of graphic design. The way we visualize data, for example, this example that we're looking at over here, like the way uh, we looked at the spread of pandemic and COVID and how we consumed it and how we understood the gravity of it was all a visualization that was enabled 
by those with the skills of graphic design. And that is what made it informative. That is what made it critical. And that is what informed people in the time of need about how they should behave, how they should be, and how they have, to, what is the situation and what is the context that they are a part of. So I believe it's very important for us to understand that it's not this, just digital design. It's also data-driven design, which is contributing to the digital landscape um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Okay. Also to adding to that, like in right. such a difficult time, if you look at it from a different perspective, like um, design played such an important role. Like yeah. uh, there were posters that were made, there were instructions everywhere. You know, when you're standing in a queue to buy your groceries, um, you stand in circles that are separated from each other. So that is also a part of design. That is also designing an experience. You know, somebody must have thought of it that, oh, let us draw circles so people stand apart from each other. Lovely. Thank you. That's a great example. <laughs> okay, so moving on, another uh, myth or things that we get told as a graphic designer is people think that uh, our jobs are really fun, which they are, but they also think that our jobs are very frivolous. People think graphic designing is all about uh, making things look pretty. It's about, uh, you know, it's for people who are not good at their studies, who are not interested in studies, who are never, you know, uh, traditionally uh, fit into the school or the grading system and stuff like that. But I think that it, it goes beyond that. Um, it is about making things look good, but at the same time, making them uh, functional as well. Um, it's also about, you know, as a designer, you think that whatever you make, people will understand, but that's not true. Um, as a designer, when you're designing for a brand or a campaign or whatever it is, uh, you're trying to communicate a message visually. Now, uh, a message that is communicated visually like this flying mask here or a flying balloon, we might all interpret it in very different ways. We might have you know, different thoughts when we look at it. Uh, but as a designer, my job is to ensure that most people who are looking at it, if not all, um, get the same message from it. Um, and that uh, can only come when you keep educating yourself when you keep becoming more and more aware about the people that you're designing for, the people who are going to be looking at your designs or interacting with it, um, their social backgrounds, their economical backgrounds, what cultures they're from. Um, and that is why research uh, in design plays a very important role. Like you just don't go on your computer and just randomly put words and things together. Uh, you, do a, conduct a lot of research, you pull out a lot of data, that then enables you to make something that can be understood by people. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you, Soumya. To adding to it, Soumya, can you please move on to the next slide, please? So, um, as Soumya was saying, it's not you, uh, you may as like, um, uh, you may assume that because it's, you know, graphic design, because it has creativity involved in it, like it maybe it's not all that, you know, it's not such a big deal, but, uh, let us correct you over there because it is a big deal. It is a big deal because all graphic designers are authors, um, and because you're not just working with the written word, you're working with the written word and images, the responsibility that you carry is much larger than, much larger, because even people who are not able to read the written word will be consuming your visuals, will be affected by it. As a design author, you carry a responsibility. Anything that you make, anything that you create is going to be put out in the world. It is going to be there for people to see. And hundreds and thousands of people are going to be affected by it, consciously or unconsciously. For example, there are multiple social impact campaigns that are driven by the sheer idea that designers generate on a day-to-day basis based on their creative, intellectual, critical thinking skills and ability that they harness, that they hone, that they work on and develop on a day-to-day basis. There are campaigns that have allowed this world to become a slightly better place than it used to be. Well, it's, it's work in progress. I'm not going to disagree there. Of course, it's work in progress. 
But uh, it is like uh, any conversation that we have about design today includes sustainability. It is the responsibility of the designer to ensure that anything that they're creating is not necessarily uh, contributing to the uh, to the ills of the world or rather making this a better place. For example, when you look at the example of Amul campaign. Now, Amul as a brand takes pride on the, on the uh, like on, uh, like takes pride in the fact that it's a national brand right like it's the butter of india amul the butter of india now how do they reinforce that philosophy over and over again time and again whenever there's something big that is happening across the country you know is something of relevance they will align um, their billboards their amul girl, girl um, um, editorials to the the to the issue at hand and with that you know they align themselves to the voices of millions of people they say we are with you it is through campaigns like this that they reach out to millions that they resonate with what the nation is feeling and that is how they create a sense of belongingness through the campaigns that they're creating. Now, this would not be possible if a graphic designer is not able to apply himself, is not able to understand uh, what the needs of the people are, how they are feeling, what do they need to hear, what can give them hope really, you know, like what, what would they want to know at a time like this, what makes them happy, what, you know, um, what gives them a sense of pride in being a part of this nation and that's and I think Amul does a fantastic job of it and that's what you know that's what designers are capable of and we look at editorials when we look at newspapers when we look at magazines be it a fashion magazine um, be it uh, be it a political magazine even a children's magazine it is a responsibility of the designer to accurately find the visual metaphors um, to issues that are highly sensitive. It has deep implications. It can, I mean, um, uh, editor, like editor, advertorials, ad, no, sorry, not advertorials, but editorial cartoons have been known to create riots. And there's a reason for that because it, because images have the capacity to evoke intense emotions in people. And hence, as a graphic designer, it is your responsibility to be sensitive to the needs of the people, to the desires of the people, to the emotions and to the pulse of what the, the, a large group of a certain community or a, uh, like, you know, a state or nation or even the world at large is going through and then responding to it accordingly. Uh, Another example of it would be swastika. Now, as a, like, you know, in India, I'm sure most of you are aware of this symbol. I mean, I've seen a lot of my batchmates, you know, put this side, like when we were students, they would put it on their exam papers, right, before writing their papers, because it's supposed to be auspicious, it's supposed to be pious, it's a, it's a sign of good luck. However, turn the swastika around at, say, 45 degrees, and it has a completely different um, meaning to it all together. It becomes a sign of one of the most gory and deadly uh, catastrophes to hit the humanity in the history of the world, right? That, now you as a graph, like graphic designers can't afford to make these mistakes. You have to be aware, you have to be observant. Now you may not be academically inclined in the truest, like in, uh, in a very conventional sense of the world, right? Like you may not have read a lot of books or you may not be very good at remembering, th remembering things, but do you, do you have the capacity to look at the world around you critically, to be able to address your own biases, to be able to ask the right questions and then have the rigor to seek answers to those questions from and collect multiple points of view? Are you able to connect the dots? Are you able to then use the knowledge that you have gathered by connecting those dots to make something that responds to the needs of the people. Uh, and that is what, and that's a lot of intensive process, you know, it's not whimsical, it's not lighthearted. I mean, of course, there's humor if you want there to be a humor in your outcome, but it's not whimsical, it's not easy. 
and it's definitely not for people who like who believe that oh you know what like just because i can't do anything else i'll do graphic design it's a it's a big mistake if you think that you know graphic design is your backup choice it's really not a backup choice especially if you wish to be a graphic designer of relevance okay moving on to the next one so may if there's anything you'd like to add to it please do no i think uh, with my personal experience as well like this is something that i learned on the job like when i started working with uh, these artists who had re- like they were pen- like their reach was penetrating in the like the the entire country and even different parts of the world so even like crafting while crafting communications for them like we had to be careful about every word and everything in or on an image or a communication that they put out because uh, uh, people are now aware people stand for something so you have to become the voice of the brand and you have to you know uh, make that voice your own to an extent only then can you uh, sort of uh, do justice to it lovely excellent and that i believe brings us to our last myth of the day which is that graphic design is limited to print i think we've stressed enough about it maybe we'll just quickly reiterate the fact that please do not assume that graphic design is limited to print only anyone who ever tells you that graphic design is all about making postcards or visiting cards is sadly mistaken as the discipline of design has evolved as the digital landscape has evolved as the technology has evolved so has the discipline of graphic design and there are ample examples all around you i mean one of the biggest examples of course is like you know like is the fact that you know you're using your phones in your phones you're using images to communicate feelings and emotions to give tone to the written word like somya said if we did not have emoticons how would we have clarity of communication oh god imagine like what kind of <laughs> like what kind of mess we'd be a part of and like this is all a work of a graphic designer people who are able to create images that make sense that are able to appeal universally and like perhaps customize those images for specific needs of very specific people um somya can we move on to the next slide please yes um so like we have been uh Uh, saying graphic design is very much a, a part of our lives and it sort of helps us shape it shapes the world around us uh, slowly but uh, it does have an impact uh, for example netflix every time i'm sure this logo uh, sort of pops up on our uh, television screens it's uh, a different sort of an excitement uh, a very simply made n and then you sort of immerse into it and that is what netflix is all about uh, it's about that experience where you just have to keep watching it you binge watch it and so beautifully conveyed uh, through their uh, 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 logo and how it is animated um then another very integral part of our lives is now instagram or snapchat filters everybody is now a dog they have clear beautiful glass skin <laughs> they're uh, floating in space you can do whatever you want to do that's an integration of uh, augmented reality or ar into our daily lives we do it like at least five times a day i see people taking pictures with filters on um then it's a part of advertising as well uh, like this campaign a very cool campaign that burger king did where uh, you could scan uh, the ad of their competitors and it would burn that ad and show you an ad of burger king instead uh, so much for competition between brands burger to to burger king to get like a to get said like in your face this is what i'm going to do this is like burning your ad is what i'm going to do um then with uh, made in india happening in the country right now uh, uh, a lot of small businesses uh, are being promoted uh, so incomes are increasing payments online are also increasing so there's a need to uh, have a, have a digital identity for all the people you know to prevent fraud uh, to have access easy access to people's uh, identities just to prove that uh, you know they're they're real and not a fraud um and then also these cute little stickers uh, uh screecher popping out and you know saying hi it, it's a part of whatever we do whatever we see uh, 
we are surrounded by graphic design in today's time. Um, so let us just, uh, I think it's safe to say that, uh, you know, with graphic design, uh, it is everywhere and it's here to stay. It probably started in it, at like the very beginning of evolution when um, it was probably the first sign of visual communication might have been like a cave painting. And from there to today's world where, you know, uh, it, it, it uh, moves the world, it uh, moves with the world. It's become a part of our lives. And uh, uh, I see it, it as... Um, a profession that is constantly walking in hand uh, with the evolution of humans as well. Uh, we said technology, it adapted to technology. We said uh, virtual reality, we're now creating virtual worlds with it. Uh, so I think it's safe to say that the possibilities with design are endless and I think it will just constantly keep evolving and let's see where it goes in the future. Lovely, excellent. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Uh, so just to reiterate five myths that we have busted today graphic design is not limited to your skills of drawing right graphic design is not photoshop graphic design is not divorced to technology graphic design is not a whimsical profession and graphic design is not all about print only please remember that like you said at the beginning of this conversation, at the beginning of this discussion, graphic design is a combination of text and images to package a message in various mediums to reach a large number of people to reach an audience. But along with that, graphic design also has the capacity to transcend the boundaries of language and literacy. It's a powerful force. Like Soumya said, like it's here and it's here to stay and evolve and grow and become larger and larger with all the advancement that we're going to have. It's a powerful force that allows designers to navigate behaviors and to convince a large number of people in making choices for commercial, social, political gains or impact for that matter. And it transforms societies. It transforms the world that we live in, that we inhabit. Um, it allows us to make sense um, in the, in the visually saturated world that we are a part of, like the number of images that we consume on day-to-day -day basis is astounding. And we are, we are affected by it every day. It's not only limited to historical or current state of affairs. Graphic design is shaping and will continue to shape the future of political organizations, of brands, of generations for I think for as long as human beings are there, as long as we continue to generate images, graphic design is going to be here and graphic design is here to stay. Right? Okay, that. moving on. To the interest of time, let's now move on to what we offer at time. Uh, as of now, we have two different models for our graphic design course. Uh, there are two different models because they are designed for uh, uh, designed based on how much time a person can put into the course. Um, we will get to questions very soon. Let's just, uh, just bear with us for another 10 minutes or so and then we answer your question. Um, the font here, we, we, the font that we've used, sorry, I had to answer that. Somebody's asked us what font we've used. We've used big shoulders text for this presentation. Um, thank you for asking and noticing. Um, coming back to the course structure, there's a part-time course that is a 20 week or six months long uh, course. Um, uh, so with this course, we meet live for a class or a lecture or a discussion uh, three times a week. Uh, so three days in a week and for two hours every day, right? And um, then design is, uh, you know, design education is not something where you can listen to us talk and you get it. You don't become a designer by listening to us. You become a designer by practicing it constantly. Um, so apart from the six hours of live lectures that we do, you also will have to spend another six hours every week uh, to practice on your assignments. Um, and then we have a full-time course that is a year long. It's divided into two terms. Um, the first term for the first six months is going to be full-time. 
where uh, you will have classes for about 16 to 20 hours per week. And uh, then you have to devote an equal amount of time, say 20 hours uh, in that week to work on assignments on your own. Um, so the, the, the difference between the two courses is the sheer amount of time that you need to devote towards this course. Uh, when I say devote time, it is actually like devoting time. You cannot, you know, uh, uh, you have to really immerse uh, into what you're doing, the assignment that you're working on. And uh, uh, that is how you get to thinking and making your work better. Uh, Sakshi, would you like to talk a little bit yes. more about uh, they're going so to should you, uh, Right. So... Uh... Uh, within the two programs that Samya just talk, spoke about, there's a very interesting learning curve to it. It starts with a very fundamental understanding of design. We look at, you know, uh, basics of color and composition, typography, visual language, and storytelling through images. And so that you're equipped with the right kind of elements um, as you go further to develop your own ideas. We then take it forward and we introduce you to grid systems. We, we uh, show you how to use type, how the application of type works, what is layout and page design, what, how do you achieve usability and functionality in print and publications. Um, once you've understood these fundamentals, we then move on to introduce you to the process of design. And this is largely done through a brand identity projects. Um, you understand elements of branding, uh, you uh, employ design process to create your own, uh, your very own brand that becomes a part of your portfolio. Um, you're able to, uh, you, you look at the application of the identity that you create and you present a design concept as a narrative. So it's not just about uh, creating a brand identity, it's also about communication and presentation of that brand identity in a manner um, that a non-designer as well as designers are able to appreciate it. Um, then we move on to understanding user interaction and usability, information architecture, visual styling of interfaces um, relevant in the digital landscape that we have been talking about. Moving on to visual rhetorics, communication to inform, influence or persuade, social media and content marketing and presentation skills, which is where you take all that you have learned previously and you now begin to apply it to achieve higher order of learning in a manner that you wish to. So all of this that you do uh, part by part contributes to your portfolio. These are smaller projects that you will be doing and each one of each pro, each in every module you will create end products that will be a part that will eventually become a part of your portfolio. That is, I mean, and that's that's what a designer is. A designer is as good as their portfolio, right? Like, so we invest time and effort in helping you build your portfolio so that once you're done with the course, you have something to show for it. And you can customize it. You can make it as relevant as you want to based on your own interest and uh, intensity for that. Like, yeah, so over to you. Uh, so these are some of the projects uh, uh, in, in that Sakshi just spoke about. Um, it, it's just uh, to give you a glimpse into the diversity that uh, graphic design carries from making posters to print and publication, um, brand identity and communication, which is not just logo design, but like looking at brands from a larger perspective and understanding the entire ecosystem, uh, designing a campaign, again, an extension of uh, communication for brands or otherwise to spread awareness, uh, but looking at how to create communication strategies um, and designing web, designing for uh, web as well. So um, people think that UI is usually like a very separate entity, but that is also graphic design or visual communication in like a different form. So we will also touch upon uh, that a little bit. Lovely. 
Right. So um, as we have seen in the past few slides, graphic design spans and has opportunities within brand identity. We are looking at signage and environmental graphics. We are looking at book design and editorial design. We're looking at data driven design. We're looking at campaigns. We are looking at exhibition film and motion graphics. We're also looking at typography as an independent entity. Now, with all of these ways, in which you can uh, operate or, or the ways in which you can um, contribute to the field of graphic design, you can decide what you want to be. You can choose to be a graphic designer. You can choose to be an art director. If you, if you have great skills of coordination, collaboration, if, you're, if you have the vision, I think it would make a great art director. You can be a UI designer. Trust me, you know, like uh, UX design, uh, uh, is in like uh, like needs UI design to be able to reach people. Publication designer, uh, no matter what they say, I don't think people are going to stop reading anytime soon, right? Like no matter how short our attention spans become, readers will read. And then digital designer, of course, like who is not on, like, I mean, there are, of course, there are people who are not on social media, but by and large, you know, we have to embrace the virtual world that we are a part of, brand identity designer, because the brands are becoming exceedingly competitive in the, uh, like um, every brand is now competing and has to come up with new, novel, innovative, interesting, exciting ideas to be able to grab the attention of people and hold on to that attention to win that loyalty. Um, so brand identity is designer is a great space to be in. And then of course, as a social media designer, if you like working with data, you know, like uh, like there's a whole field of data visualization and analytics that you can be a part of. So like depending on your interest, your inclination, your passion and your abilities, and the, of course the portfolio that you're able to curate, there are multiple opportunities and this list is definitely not exhaustive. These are some of the opportunities that are out there for you, but there are many more that you can explore as the field, as the discipline is, evolves, as design evolves and as technology evolves. And with that, I would like to hand it over to Suyash. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, could we quickly, yeah. So guys, I, I, sorry for that. I would just like to quickly take you and uh, through like, you know, the kind of scope and opportunities available in graphic designing in India. And just to give an overview of the industry today. So as you can see, there are like, you know, more than 6.44 uh, lakhs is the average annual salary of a graphic designer. And this is for pressures. Like, you know, as a pressure of graphic design, this is the kind of uh, salary that you can draw as a pressure. And this is taken from sources like Glassdoor, Nofri.com. And you could also do that. In the following slides, I'll show you that as well. Uh, so maybe we could do it next. Also, this was among the top five in most demanded uh, design jobs of 2022. And as you can see over here, uh, like, you know, the average salaries are highlighted and the amount of jobs that each bracket has. So if you look at a pressure uh, between six to 10 lakhs, you can clearly see that there are more than 4,980 jobs that are available. And overall in graphic design, there is more like uh, 8,000 jobs available. And this is with some of the top brands. If you look at the right hand side, uh, you have some of the best brands in India hiring graphic designers. And this is from Nokri.com. You could actually go on uh, Nokri.com and search for yourself. You just have to type graphic designer and all the data will be in front of you. And uh, the same thing can be done at Glassdoor. Uh, this is again taken from like, you know, just uh, 4,000 salaries. And uh, this is the average salary that Glassdoor has. Again, you need to keep in mind that there are two uh, genres of uh, graphic designing. As a hiring manager, we always hire two sorts. One is a DTP operator who just knows Photoshop and the tool. And the other is a graphic designer who can actually design stuff from scratch. Where I can give them a brief and they can actually come up with a design with the entire visual communication and give it back to you. And the desktop operator, I have to tell them exactly what needs to be done. And they just use their tools to do whatever it is that I've asked. 
so that is the kind of salaries that you would see on an average like you know a desktop operator who just knows photoshop or illustrator can easily get uh, anywhere between 30000 to 50000 uh next slide please Again, this is uh, another screenshot from Indeed, and you can see here the kind of salaries and uh, opportunities available. So these are some of the biggest job portals in India. Uh, next, I would quickly like to tell you that at IID, which is our uh, main institution, these are the uh, brands that we place the students with. These are some of the biggest brands in India, especially in terms of marketing. Uh, could we quickly go to the next slide? And these are some of the students that we've placed them. In fact, uh, the first student, uh, Simmat Singh, he was placed with Scalar and he was offered an internship for 40,000 rupees. Uh, could we quickly go to the next slide? Okay, so I think uh, that's yeah. it from us for the day. Uh, we're now open for questions. If there's anything that you want to ask us, uh, go for it. Uh, type your queries in the chat section and we're happy to uh, answer those for you. There's one question. Um, and the question is from Chaitanya. The question is, what are the ways to select a color scheme for a project? Soumya, would you like to take this on? Yeah, so Chaitanya, there's, uh, there's no one way to select a color scheme. Like I can't teach you how to select a color. Um, there's a lot of different uh, aspects that you need to consider. Like a color is not just a color. Like as designers, we often get a feedback that, oh, this is too yellow, this is too orange, this is too green. Like, can we lessen the green a little bit? Can we, you know, make the blue a little more warm or I don't know, random feedback on colors. But there is an entire thought process that goes into not just selecting a color or a color scheme, but making the entire design come together as a whole. So you select your fonts, your colors, your visuals, your copy, uh, your images that you're using, illustrations if there are any, and they all come together to form your design. Uh, so it's a long process, Chaitanya, to learn how to even select the color and uh, yeah. Lovely. I'd just like to add to that, Chaitanya, that over the period of time, designers have also studied color theory. So there's a very um, scientific way in which we have looked at the perception of color, how color is perceived how colors interact with each other, uh, what is the relationship of different colors to each other, um, and how does the human, uh, like how do humans respond to it? Colors are not necessarily just there for the aesthetics of it. Colors also have the capacity to evoke various kinds of feelings and emotions. Sometimes they're biological. Sometimes they are also um, things that we learn from our culture, the connotations that are attached to various colors. So based on your, like, so one, of course, there is the understanding of the color theory that you need to have before you can start talking about how to choose the right color scheme. And on top of that, you also have need to have an understanding of who you're designing it for. What is the relevance of the project and what kind of, uh, what kind of relevance uh, do the, the two specific colors hold in that particular community or culture? Um, like, I'm sure you're aware of it. Like, like a very simple example of that would be the color white, which is perceived very differently in West versus East, right? So um, looking at, uh, I believe, and uh, like uh, first the fundamental understanding of color theory, and then looking at the connotations that are attached to it with respect to the audience that you're designing with is of foremost importance. And then we go into the nuances of tones and shades and choice of colors based on the objective of the project that you're designing. So, right? Right. Uh, so I think there are a few more questions. Uh, somebody has asked, what are the skills required to be a graphic designer? Uh, I think the skills required to be a graphic designer can be taught. That is why we're here. Uh, that's our job to do. I think to learn design, you need to have an open mind. You need to come with an open mind. You should be eager to learn. You should be curious to observe 
people places uh, the way people think it is also a little bit of psychology that you learn with design not in the form of psychology but you know psychology related to design that's the uh, principles of designs and some laws that you will study and stuff like that um, but yeah you need to be observant you need to have an open mind and you need to be very very dedicated uh, be open to uh, putting in a lot of uh, nights just uh, working on your assignments and the projects that you've been assigned and uh, yeah sakshi would you like to add anything no i think one of course i think we've spoken enough about it during the presentation as well um i feel one of the most important skills that a graphic designer needs to have is the skills of observation if you're able to observe and then of course based on like you know your observation if you're able to um use a uh, visualization uh, like you know if you're able to use which uh, like uh, the ability to create visuals as a means to process your observations and then uh, take it from there and then of course you learn design process you learn how to use various elements that are a part and parcel of design you understand about the theory like you understand color you understand composition you understand typography and then you bring the large idea of you know uh, the large ideas of ideation conceptualization articulation um, research together uh to create something meaningful and that is the reason why there are courses that teach you design right because it's not random it's not arbitrary it's not just putting it together in the mix and shaking it and hoping that it works <laughs> right uh and that's yeah that those are the skills Actually, and so may i add i think also uh the so being observant and uh, being interested in people uh and also i think Uh, not looking for quick fixes uh, or not expecting uh, answers in black and white right. this is right that is wrong so right. one needs to get out of this binary thinking so if you if you can stay tentative i think you can be a great designer if you can be like ha huh, this but maybe that so if you can do that if your sentences tend to be ending with not a full stop but with a dot 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 right that's an indication that you can be a designer graphic or otherwise right so i think that's a very important point the ability to take feedback and to improvise and to improvise over and over again and to have the ability to accept uh, the flaws as a part of the product end product is also uh, a skill that one needs to develop over the so there are lots of questions popping up so uh, so i'm yeah. actually going to help you with reading out the questions right. and uh, so that and we'll try and go through them quickly so that we can take as many of them as possible how right. can we figure out if we can become a graphic designer i think we've sort of answered that uh if you are interested in people if visuals interest you if telling stories interests you if um, uh, you know uh, then then you can be a graphic designer the rest like somya said everything can be trained a lot of graphic design a lot of design is trainable uh, most skills are trainable uh, but we can't train you to be interested in people we can't train you we can't inject curiosity in you you have to be curious you have to be observant we will teach you how to convert those observations into outcomes we will teach you um uh, processes that can help your curiosity right but you have to be innately curious uh the next question is what kind of devices so there are two questions uh what is the go to device or app to create a graphic design i'm tempted to answer this myself you know i wish anything good in life could be achieved out of an app you know i think the whole point of this webinar was that you there is no there is no easy uh, way out so there is no app to create a graphic design there are no devices to create graphic design De graphic design the only app and device that you need for graphic design is your own uh, brain uh an imagination and then there are tools so there would be you'll use a laptop or a desktop with several softwares uh and depending and you know like like you have a carpenter has a toolkit 
with many tools you will have that uh so that's two questions what kind of devices would one need i think uh, a laptop or a desktop uh, is what you will need if you like to draw a lot and convert your drawings into uh, elaborate drawings then maybe a a graphic pen a, a digital pen will be helpful but to begin with you may not need that as well so that's two questions hopefully answered right so there's a question how can i start career in graphic design um i believe a part of it has been answered by somya uh, there are two courses that and academy is offering uh, there's a there's a graphic design diploma and there's a pg diploma depending on the time availability that you have but a formal course in graphic design would allow you to develop a deeper understanding of design if that's the question that you're asking you may be able to learn the tools online but if you if you want to understand what the process of design is how one becomes a designer of relevance i believe you need to do a formal course to be able to achieve that uh, prachi or somya would you like to add to that no i think sakshi that's uh, what... i would just like to quickly add that the post graduate course that we have that comes with a job guarantee as well so if in case vishal you are a you're not a working professional and you do take the post graduate course of a year you would get a, a job yeah. guarantee i'm interrupting you vishal is actually an enrolled student uh, oh so all right yeah no is yeah but i think uh, oh, okay i'm sorry it's redmi hood tech is whoever that is yeah. so yeah i think we've answered that how can you start a career in how can you start a career in graphic design how i'll replace graphic design with any how do you start a career you start a career by going through a formal training in that career uh, that is the way to start uh, your this thing after that uh, i think i'm going to connect it to a different question uh, how is being a freelance dif freelancer different from working for a company and as a freelance designer how does one price their work uh, so we'll take the first question i think sakshi do you want to say how is being a freelance graphic designer different from working for a company right it it actually depends on you know like your own personal motivation if you're someone who likes to dabble in multiple projects who likes who is extremely uh, protective of their own independence likes to decide what they wish to work on what they don't want to work on likes to dip their toes in various pools uh that's like that's the kind of work that freelancers get to do you know you get to choose your projects you get to say no to projects um and you get to work on a variety uh, of pro, like you know ideas and projects based on uh, what kind of reputation you've built for yourself what kind of network you've built for yourself what kind of portfolio you're able to boast of as opposed to that however the the challenge with freelance is that it's it, it may not be a steady income right so for example in the month of say january to march you may get a lot of projects and you may not have the capacity to deal with all of those projects and you may have to say no to a lot of projects and of course you'll also have a like a season when you know like you don't have enough projects so in like you know in, inflow of income um, can um, dwindle whereas in a company you have a steady job there is a constant income of course you're bound by the kind of company that you're working for so for example should i choose to work for accenture i would be working i don't necessarily get to choose all the projects that i work on i'm assigned projects i work on those projects based on my area of expertise and i am able to uh, over the period of time either develop expertise in one particular area or i am able to transcend between things based on my area of interest but um, largely uh if you're someone who's great at networking if you're someone who's great at you know um creating your own brand out there uh, you, you're able to uh, uh manage uh, like uh, multiple projects at the same time then freelance is a good place to be in however if you're someone who likes a constant routine who likes um like a, like a steady stream of income especially like uh, if that's a consideration at all uh then uh, probably a job in an organization both have their advantages and disadvantages it depends on your temperament 
and what kind of work you aspire to do and what kind of a reputation you hope to build for yourself as a designer. Um, Samia, you want to add, uh, sorry, Prachi, you want to add to it. And we can't hear you. No, no, thank you. I am not going to add to it. I just wanted to quickly move to the next question. And just for the benefit of our audience, we'll just uh, take one or two more questions because we are, we've overshot our time. So as a freelancer, how does one price their work? Uh, Sakshi, can I just answer that? Yes, please. Yes, please. So um, I think that uh, pricing your work or, you know, putting a remuneration to your time uh, is something that takes experience and uh, there's no for all important questions in life there is no simple formula and this is another one of those you can, it can't be answered on something like this it's it takes time to figure out how much you should charge you have to understand industry standards you have to understand the quality that you're able to deliver you have to understand the resources that you will be using uh, and uh, time and uh, other uh, other expertise uh, is also uh, into account so somebody might design a logo for 1000 rupees and somebody might charge a crore to design a logo the process that you follow in designing the logo will change the demand of the client will change so i think there's no simple answer to that question uh, Samia, do you want to just say what are the tools you will be teaching other than Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign? Yeah, sure. So these are three major tools that we'll be focusing on. But apart from that, you will also work on some animation softwares uh, like After Effects. Uh, and you will be working with uh, some UI design softwares as well like XD. Um, but again, our course doesn't focus on software learning. It is something that is uh, that will be provided to you as a track. So we will basically give you a list of videos um, to watch with a deadline. But uh, uh, we want to focus our uh, time together on you know talking about design and design thinking. Um, as opposed to software learning, which is essentially you know you can even watch YouTube videos. Uh, right now and uh, practice Photoshop and you will learn it. Uh, so that is something you will be learning on your own, but with our support. Uh, there's a question from uh, Fatima, which came quite early and she has been very patient, Fatima. Uh, what are the study material we need to have? Uh, Samia, you want to just take yeah. that? So Fatima, there's no study material as such that you will have. Uh, all the study material or all the course material will be given to you by us. Um, we are right now building, um, you know, pages or uh, yeah, digital pages uh, on our learning management system. And uh, that is where you will have access to all the videos to our classes and whatever we talk about, our presentations and stuff like that. Um, you only need to come with uh, a laptop a with a functional mic and a webcam so we can see you and speak to you. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, so basically what Swami is saying that all your study material will get generated during the live sessions. And yeah. uh, of course, there will be handouts also, which we will give, but we don't expect you to invest in a study material. Uh, Vishal is saying, where should I start from to learn graphic design? Uh, I would say start at And Academy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but if I, uh, yeah, I, I think Vishal, maybe your question is if you can help yourself uh, learn about design. Now, the thing is, I actually, Sakshi, do you think that somebody can self learn design? Uh, it's, it's challenging. Because, uh, like, I get, I mean, I can only speak from my own experience. And of course, working with students, for the last few years. I believe you may be able to scratch the surface, but if you truly wish to appreciate the process of design, to appreciate the nuances and the sensibilities that go into making something relevant. Like I said, the designers today are not merely creators of visual assets. They're authors. 
their design authors. So if you hope to achieve that design authorship, if you wish to make a name for yourself in the design industry where your contributions count, then perhaps a formal training in design um, is necessary for us to at least uh, familiarize ourselves and orient ourselves to the ways the design works, to understand the impact of it, to understand the relevance of it. And not like, for example, you know, one thing, like I believe there was a question I said, like, can I, like, where the, uh, the student asked, like, one of the participants asked, where can I learn it immediately? I believe it's, uh, it's not the wisest thing if you're looking for immediate gratification with respect to learning of design. It's a constant process. We are also still learning, right? Like, what we learned 10, 15 years back has evolved now like uh, for example when i came into the industry pages was the software that was used to pub like you know uh, uh, quark and pages were the softwares that we were using today we are using multiple versions like you know very advanced versions of indesign had i said okay i've learned everything i need to know about design um, and stop learning i would not be a practicing designer today so you continue to learn design you continue to be a learner of design, but you need to have a very strong foundation to be a designer of relevance. That I think would be my response. Uh, Sakshi, I want to respond to that. You know, that's mm. a question one would not ask. Uh, uh, if you want to be an engineer, you right. wouldn't ask this question. Correct. Uh, you wouldn't expect that you will learn engineering on your own. Correct. Uh, Right. Maybe what you would do is that uh, if, if somebody said that I want to be an engineer, how can I start? We'll say, OK, start opening up uh, gadgets at home and studying them and uh, this thing. And that's what you can do with graphic design as well. Maybe start looking at great, good examples of graphic design. Maybe do a little bit of dabbling with whatever, which people keep doing. They doodle, they do this and that. But then you have to go to an engineering school to study uh, engineering. Similarly, you can't learn to be a doctor on your own. Right. You know, you uh, and that's that's what any profession is. You need to be a you need to undergo formal training to be a professional. Right. So you need to enroll yourself into a formal, whether at and or anywhere else. If you right. want to learn design any kind of design, you need to undergo formal training because that's what I think Swamya and Sakshi's presentation today was that it is serious business. You know, it's not something that you can just, uh, can I learn to cook by watching a few videos on my own? Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm sure uh, Michelin star chefs would claim otherwise. Uh, okay, uh, if there are, are there any more questions? Uh, so there's just one, the logo of AND Academy is also part of graphic design. And I think I can quickly answer that, that yes, logo design is part of brand identity design and therefore brand identity design is part of uh, graphic design. And uh, that's what it is. And thank you, uh, Sakshi and Somnia, uh, to for, for today evening and for everybody to, who attended and stayed on. Uh, so the graphic design course is starting shortly, uh, the 18th of uh, June uh, for at AND Academy. So if you are interested, you can join uh, and contact our counselors for that. But whatever it may be, I hope you, uh, you, you found today's uh, one 90 minutes useful uh, and helpful uh, in, in you know, aiding you to make a decision whether you want to be part of the graphic design community. And thank you. Good night, everybody.